So you self-manage your real estate. You're a mom and pop landlord. Should you be using keyless entry? Should you be using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? We're going to have this conversation with the CEO of Hemlane, the one and only Dana Dunford. Hi, Dana. Hey, Michael. Thanks so much for having me again. Oh, man. We've had some great conversation over the years, really trying to help mom and pop think about things they could do, they can implement. Uh, we have talked about keyless entry before. We've talked about for showings and things of that nature. Uh, why don't we talk about uh, keyless entry again, but also Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? Is there one better than the other? What do you think? Great. So uh, just to kind of kick it off, one thing I do want to bring up is the fact that the world is going more remote. Um, from the perspective of being able to understand what's going on with your property from anywhere. You don't necessarily have to be there. Um, it started just with online platforms to collect your rent, communicate with tenants. And it's always been said, you know, it starts with your primary residence where like home technology and new technology comes and then it uh, trickles down and goes to rental properties next. And the reason that I think it's important to talk about this more and more is we see it more and more at Hemling that more small uh, mom and pops are saying, hey, how do I get keyless entry for my rental property? And there's also a lot of cost savings with it. So for example, in Texas, between tenants, you are required by law to rekey your property. Ah. Sending out a locksmith, <clears throat> sending out a locksmith to rekey your property costs money. But when you're in an app and you just change the code and that code is expired for the tenants, suddenly Fine. it's a two, it's a two second um, process that you don't have to pay for. And so the the real um, questions here are what are the best keyless entry systems and what you should kind of think about with it. And yeah, I, you're good. Go ahead. What do you do? You and, have a, and, do you have a favorite that you like? Uh, do you have a, I don't know, a recommendation or, or something you've used? Yeah. So I'll, I'll first talk about kind of the wave of it. And then I want to okay. talk a, a lot about Wi-Fi versus Bluetooth. Please. So um, what we've see, seen happen as a wave is it starts with kind of code box or sentry lock, which is actually just saying keys get put in a digital lock box where the code constantly changes. Right. But of course, that doesn't solve the problem of keys getting lost, stolen, rekeying, all of that Copied. that goes into it. Copied, exactly. And so then you say, okay, great. Well, why don't I just put what I put on my primary residence? Why don't I go ahead and put that on to my rental properties? Okay. There's one big thing that you overlook that actually, if you have an Airbnb, it's quite easy. It's much easier. With Airbnb, um, you have Wi-Fi in the property because it's hospitality. So you want mm -hmm. to offer Wi-Fi to all of your travelers who are coming to stay with you. Yep. But in the case of when the rental property is vacant and it's not an Airbnb, but a long-term rental, now suddenly you're talking about Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So there has been this concept of well, why don't we use Bluetooth? You can use Bluetooth to, um, you can't do it remotely, but you could create codes, give those, and they are one, they, you create like hundreds of codes that are one use codes. Right. Um, Rently does this. It's one use codes, and then they expire after every single uh, time a tenant like views the property or something like that. Mm. And then you can give a code that doesn't expire to the tenants who are moving in, and you could re-enable the Wi-Fi from there. There are a couple of things that we've seen go wrong with the Bluetooth. And so I think it's important to bring that up just as you're kind of balancing this and asking this question of, could we just have keypads on our property? Okay. So the first thing that we've seen that goes wrong is it gets disconnected often. Mm. So it will get disconnected. You have to have someone go out, reconnect the Bluetooth where that you just don't see happen with something that has Wi-Fi. So if you work with Wi-Fi um, and you set it up and you have some sort of um, cellular, you can get like a Z-Wave Home Connect and it's cellular. It costs like seven to nine dollars per month. And then you always have that Wi-Fi and you can check everything who's gone into the property, who hasn't. Did the vendor lock up? Is the front door locked or unlocked? There's a lot that you can do with Wi-Fi that you can't do with Bluetooth. 
Hmm. So it was really interesting because if you had asked me, and we've done a ton of research and discovery into this, if you would have asked me at the onset, um, should you use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi as a small mom and pop landlord, I probably would have said Bluetooth initially saying, you don't want to pay for the cellular data, which is, you know, seven to $9 per month for that kind of smart home hub. You should just use Bluetooth and then go ahead. And from there, um, you know, you don't have any additional cost. You just put it on the door. You have plenty of codes, a couple of admin codes that never expire, including for the tenants who actually move in and then single use codes. If you have vendors or someone like that going in the property, but now after doing a lot of discovery and experiencing it mm -hmm. firsthand, you never know until you actually try something. Right. Yeah. The, the cost of sending out a handyman to go and reconnect the Bluetooth, it just becomes one of those things that over time you say this is so inconvenient, or then you have a vendor no-show fee because the Bluetooth wasn't connected, they couldn't get into the property. Exactly. And yeah. so, yeah, so now I'm much more in the mindset of everything is going to go with the Wi-Fi, and you are going to need some sort of smart home hub for it. Where there are additional benefits for you of this are a couple of things. First, I think it is attractive for tenants to have um, keyless entry and then giving them access to be able to change those codes and have sure. it where, you know, they also don't have to have keys. They also know which vendors are going in and all of that. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is with a smart home hub, you can actually add a lot more to the um, to the property, primarily around security, and it depends on the neighborhood. In some neighborhoods, you don't have to worry so much about the security, but in others, having motion detectors in the property mm -hmm. and having motion detectors on the windows, yep. we've noticed in some of our lower income areas, it's actually beneficial to have those motion detectors in the property it's a one-time cost that you have. Once you have that, then it gives you this peace of mind with the property that you know who's there, when they're there, and if there's any sort of odd behavior going on. And I don't care if you have an agent there or if you don't have an agent there. An agent might do showings, you know, once a week, and there's still a, the ability for someone to go into the property at, on um, like at night. And so when I look at kind of the future of rentals, it's exciting because you see this home technology and the smart home technology starting to transform and trickle down into this part of the industry, which is very exciting. Um, at the same time, there's always a, a cautionary tale to make sure you're doing it right. And so QuickSet and Yale are probably the best ones I see, the dominant players in the space. And so if you are looking for um, uh, lockbox technology, it's uh, Quickset and Yale who are, I think, in my opinion, the dominant players. And you don't want to go with someone who's not a dominant player in this space, especially if you're going to have this on your door for 20 yeah. years. And so uh, that's kind of, uh, that's that's really what we're seeing in the industry. And I'd be curious to know um, what you've heard as well, Michael. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because I like you, Bluetooth is one of those, uh, a lot of things in real estate, there, there's a logical answer and then there's a practical answer. I think logically speaking, as a landlord, mom and pop, uh, Bluetooth was the right answer, just intuitively. But in mm -hmm. practice, it wasn't the right answer because of those, you're not saving the the fees, it goes down or off. It's, it's, it's kind of funny that in practice, like you, you put it out there with the best intentions and didn't, it just created a new set of problems. So um, it's funny how we Wi-Fi came back. To, what was the home network you said was seven bucks, or what was that called again? Oh, um, it's a Z-Wave um, that you can. It's like a home hub that you can connect, and you can also get any sort of cellular. You can buy them basically from anywhere, just a cellular hub. And what that does is it's you know seven to nine dollars a month, and it allows you to connect your home technology to it. So you could also have right. your thermostat, other type of, um, some other type of um, a home technology to it. And where that actually comes into play is definitely when you're looking at um, frozen pipes and certain things right. like that, and just making sure that you know what's going on in your home. 
Yeah. Um, there's a yeah, lot there's, that there's you can a little, connect to it. We have, we have in our second homes, we have little alerts next to all the water pipes just in case that go off and yeah, you know, tell us. So, folks, what I'll try to do for you here is I will go and find Z-Wave and some Quickset and Yale's uh, products, and I'll put links below just to help you with your search because I'm sure you're going to poke around. I'll try to give you a head start. You can look below for some, some links. Dana, if somebody wanted to have the trial of him, Lane, because everybody on this channel is interested in real estate, most of them want to be landlords, they should practice. Where would they go? Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com -E and just mention one rental at a time because you get 20% off your first year. Thank you so much.